Hello, this is Dr. Mary, and this is a video for best practices in terms of how to navigate um, the asynchronous course that I am teaching and also any asynchronous course. So what I'm going to do now is share my screen so that I can navigate where everything is located on our Canvas course shell. And this is an example of what the Canvas course shell looks like for the Ethnic Studies 4200 Racial and Ethnic Experiences Asynchronous Course. And this applies to all of the Ethnic Studies 4200 courses that I teach in the asynchronous format. So first of all, I'm gonna go into viewing the course as a student, which this is what you will see when you come to the Canvas course shell as a student. And so the first uh, tip for how to navigate an asynchronous course is to start out with the very first module, which is labeled syllabus, week one readings, which are actually more so pre-readings because I do these readings. I have created a course overview lecture video where you don't have any assignments in relation to these readings. They will appear later in terms of questions taken directly from the Eduardo Bonilla Silva readings, which is course overview source one and course overview source two on the first unit exam. In the unit exams, there are only two in this course. They are made up exclusively of multiple choice questions that come directly verbatim from the readings. What I would first recommend, the first step for navigating this asynchronous course is to first read the watch the course and instructor intro video, which is both an introduction to me as your instructor, and more importantly, it's also an introduction to the course, not simply in terms of the course description, the learning outcomes, but also the assignments um, and also the logistics of how to navigate through the different modules. Now, what's really important that I share in the course and instructor intro video is the announcement section on our Canvas course shell is absolutely critical. I um, post announcements to the course Canvas course shell that are then sent out to each and every student as an individual email. Now, if your email inbox is anything like mine, I receive a lot of emails on a daily basis. So it's a distinct possibility that you may not see the announcements as individual emails in your inbox. You may be not checking your inbox on a regular basis, or you just may miss it for whatever reason. So what I stress that is really, really important is that you check the announcement section of our Canvas course shell on a regular basis. And what I mean by that is I would highly suggest checking this announcement section on our Canvas course shell at least two to three times a week. Any clarifications, any corrections, any updates, and also reminders of upcoming assignments, um, also announcements of, for example, when I post the unit exams, I, while that information is on the course syllabus, and I'll show you the really short um, table that's a shorthand version of that just has each assignment, the number of points, the number of frequency of the assignment, and the due dates, as well as when I post, like when I will post the unit one exam, the exact date when I will post the unit two exam. That is on your syllabus. In addition, I also 
post messages on the announcement section of our Canvas course shell so that in addition to checking the syllabus on a regular basis, I'm sure a number of you have different kinds of organizational um, strategies for keeping yourself um, on top of deadlines. I also post regular messages on a consistent basis on our Canvas course shell. Here's another really important announcement that I posted before the first day of the course, which in this case started on July 8th. Because I use a course overview video and I don't re-record videos every time I teach the course, I did include information about a teaching engagement platform called Top App. We do not use that teaching engagement platform because this is an asynchronous course. So for example, I posted this message entitled course overview video correction. And that was because I anticipated that having that information and in the course introductory video would be confusing. So that's why, oh, what's Top Hat? That's why it's really important to check the announcement section of our Canvas course shell on a regular basis. Now with the course introductory video, I also navigated through the syllabus. Um, so the first thing I will say is I did do that and I am going to go to the syllabus to show you where some really important information is located. So in addition to the course description, the course outcomes, the different parts of the course, here is a shorthand table really quick snapshot of each assignment, the frequency of each assignment, the due dates, and in the case of the unit exams, when I will post the unit exams, because I like to give at least a week for students to complete any assignment and at least a week to complete the unit exams. So, Underneath this table and the grading scale, which applies to the university across the board, under course requirements are short paragraphs explaining each assignment. So what I highly recommend and what I'm going to, if I receive questions, I will ask and or suggest go look here, right? Go to the syllabus, go to the instruction document that's already been uploaded. Um, and so here are short descriptions of each of the kinds of assignments in the course. So I highly suggest that if you have any questions about those, you go to the syllabus, and in addition to this short, these short passages, I also make sure that I have, for example, an instruction video. So in addition to watching the course and instructor intro video, because Meet Your Peers is the first assignment of the course, even though it's asynchronous, I like to go in some semblance of sequential order and it is the assignment that's due, um, you know, the first deadline for the first assignments that are due. If you are not clear when you go to the Meet Your Peers assignment link and instructions are provided on the body of the assignment itself, which is a Google slide deck, watch the instruction video first. If you want to be clear about how to complete the assignment, then if you have questions after watching the instruction video, please feel free to email me. Now, this assignment instructions, materials, and examples, I will probably only provide one example of a, a previous course's uh, presentation because these you know, presentations are on the same readings that you all are going to be selecting from and doing presentations on. So. I do have instructions 
And I'm going to update that to be consistent with response essay. Here are the response essay formatting instructions. You're going to need to read this document in order to be able to complete the response essay. And for example, I have detailed instructions. Once you read these, and if you still have questions, um, then please uh, email me. Now, I'm going to go back here. The updated, so this is, these are instructions for how you format the essay. 12 point font times New Roman is the style, right? It's going to be formatted like any other essay. So these are formatting instructions. So what I'm going to do is just move these up here. Or look, But the reflection essay instructions are the specific instructions for the content of the essay itself not merely the formatting of the essay. With the response essay, which has a due date of towards the in August, right? Towards the end of the class, you have three options. You will choose to write your essay on section A, the pre-colonial part of the course with corresponding readings, section B, the colonial portion of the course, right? So this is how the course is organized, which is located on the syllabus, or section C, critical topics, which is different from your options of the presentations that you will be completing, that I highly encourage you complete, at least with a partner, if not a group of three to four students. You will only choose to write a response essay on one of these sections. Now, within each section, is a number of questions, three to four questions. What you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be responding or more. So these, you're gonna be in your essay, you're gonna be responding to these specific questions, not by writing in numerical order, but when you do the readings from more in depth, from the section that you choose, and I'll show the readings that correspond based on the sections of how of the course, you will be reading that the readings very, very much more closely for the section that you choose to cover in your response essay. And it's a guided way of helping you to really hone in specifically on the content of your essay. So for example, if you choose section A to do the pre-colonial, you would literally go to week one readings pre-colonial and you would be reading all of these readings more closely, more in depth in order to write your essay because, your essay, because those questions are provided and also as a guide for you to just not be all over the place or for you to not just, oh, I'm just going to go through and, and just write up a summary of each reading, right? We're going to get a little bit more critical thinking than that. So again, that's what this is for the formatting, what the essay is actually going to look like, which is a standard five paragraph or two to three page essay. And obviously it is set up in a way where, um, you will go home and here under assignments, once you're ready to either type, so I just have to update this because I need to make sure the data is correct on this. Um, so it'll be open. But once you are ready, to you will have two options for your essay because it's right here on our campus course shell. This is an assignment that you will upload or you will type directly on Canvas. The unit one and two exams are assignments that you will complete directly on our campus course shell. 
So you will have two options for the response essay. So I'm going to show you. So first of all, I want to show you what that looks like. And of course, I have that the instructions for the essay questions, um, content, formatting, and deadlines are located in that assignment section module of our Canvas course shell. You have two options. You can either type in your essay directly onto Canvas, or you can type your essay on a separate Word document or save it as a PDF document and upload it directly into Canvas. Um, the essay, I meant to put July 8th. So I'm gonna save. So now when you view as a student, you can start the assignment. And that's how you would upload either by typing the essay directly in to Canvas or typing it on a separate Word document or PDF file and uploading it into Canvas. So I also suggest that you go sequentially through each section in terms of the readings. And for example, I have interactive PowerPoint presentations that are not assignments they are intended to help you to really, really do a deeper dive into the content of the readings. It's a lot of readings. It's very dense material. And simply doing the readings and then kind of, right, that's you're not going to really internalize or get a really firm grasp or understanding of the content. So that's why I have PowerPoint presentations that I have created to provide greater context and also to um, identify the key takeaways from each of the readings in each section. And then I also have lecture videos or overview videos for each individual section. So I will be completing, right, there will be a lecture video for this section. There's already one for the course overview, which I highly recommend that you watch the course overview video, because we're framing it in terms of structural racism, right? Because the course delves into racial and ethnic experiences are really, as I elaborated on in the course introduction video, um, it really looks at the construction of race within a US and also a Western context over the last 500 years and counting since the inception of colonization itself and actually the beginning of the first worldwide system according to historian Wallerstein. So again, I really highly recommend that you go through the readings, the overview lecture videos in sequential order, okay? Because that's actually really what's gonna help you the most with being able to complete the assignments um, and being able to really get the most learning out of this, this specific course in this asynchronous format. And uh, I highly recommend to that you continue these practices with any kind of online course that you have, whether it's fully asynchronous or whether it is hybrid. So whether there's an asynchronous or a synchronous portion or online portion, and I would say even with in-person classes, it's really important that you are ch like checking the announcement section, going through all of the materials that are provided in a sequential order because that's why I have organized the modules in the way that I have, right? That they are organized according to the parts of the course itself and the readings. They're also organized in terms of how I want you to engage with the material. 
at any point, for example, if you've watched the course introductory video, you've read the announcements or the messages posted in the announcement section of our Canvas course show. You've looked back over the syllabus at the brief assignment descriptions. And then you've also gone into the more in-depth documents with more in-depth instructions for each assignment and or if there are instruction videos provided and you've watched those. If you still have questions after that, please email me. It will help a lot if you go through, right, these resources in a systematic, methodical way. It will really help to clarify and clear up any possible confusion that you may have. That's why, especially with an asynchronous course, um, this is why I provide these kind of resources. And I've actually learned based on having taught this course in an asynchronous format in prior terms. And so when students have had these particular questions, which are very helpful, I'm creating this video now because of questions that students have. So I create these kind of tools and resources because I know that, I'm, because I'm responding to student need. And so it may seem like a lot, um, but there's a re there's a rationale for this. So these tools are here on our Canvas course shell for you to actually utilize them in a way that really will help you navigate the course most in the smoothest way, the most straightforward way, and in a way that is organized in a way that will help you to get the maximum learning experience out of the course. So I hope that this is helpful and good luck with the course.